Remember that alleged quote from Martin Luther King, which was becoming Martin Luther King in the street itself, by the way, from from the time that we were sort of cut journalists. Um, tell us, tell us what the the sort of the, the pressure and the importance of your carpet today, and then we'll ask them on um, you know the pressure that's on them to light up the red carpet. I mean, I'm sure that he's one of the stars, right? I mean, a uh, tent in which I was dressed up in a um, in a gown, but it was so tight that my stomach started to hurt, and I had to leave the event, and I had to. Um, so, as actors, I think we're always trying to put the best version of ourselves because somewhere we realize. But just like when I was a young girl, I was inspired by a film actor. There'll be somebody out there watching me and getting inspired. But that particular night, when I wore that outfit and I literally had a stomach ache and I had to leave the event because of my stomach being upset because of how tight and I could not breathe, I decided that very night that never again will I do this, and never again will I. We want to put another girl through that feeling that she needs to wear a dress that tight that she can't wear. <coughs> but I think that's the journey. We all need to make that journey where, in the pursuit of being putting our best foot forward, um, instead of crumbling under that pressure, we have to realize from that pressure that what is it that actually matters, uh, and what actually makes you feel good and comfortable. And what is the standard that you want to set for people? Because the standard of beauty is just sometimes it's bizarre, and it's not. Uh, I mean, realistic to try to play it, but uh, what about what you I'm saying it has to be human. Yeah. Human has to get that part. Um, so I think that's what I'm aiming for today, and, and definitely in a place where I feel like a red carpet is an opportunity for me to have fun. Yeah. And. Um, and dress up, and yes, it is literally, um, it is pretty much, you know, giving an organ away. That sort of expense is needed for a certain day. Uh, but uh, I guess I look at it like a business. Because I feel like as actors, like how she said, today we are, if you are in the fashion industry, or if you are in any way associated with it, um, it's a part of an investment into your job itself. I remember when I was a young girl, I didn't have the money, Raji. I was very, very young. I had to take it from my parents. But I would... People, they would give a budget for costumes, for film. I have taken my own costume when I was born in short summers. So to be as an actor, yes, it's hard. And it's, not, it's not possible for everybody to do it. But if you are in the position to do it, I think a smart business person or a smart potential entrepreneur will always think about you know, how can I put into my own work because I am my own work. So, yeah. so you honestly, Rajiv, I think, do what you can with, you know, with what your means are. I really believe that and I think do it more from a point of, like, I think it's going to be Hell for everyone's mental health to begin with. To see or to match up to the standard of looking a certain way and having a certain body and having a certain way, makeup and shoes all the time. I think it's, I, I worry, I worry about the next generation because I think that they have, this, they're, they're only thinking of how do I you know, have the money to get to this? It's scary. You know, how do I live up to this image that I have created for myself on social media? You don't like a job, but detach yourself from it and don't be, don't be emotional about it. Or the mark karam is there. And after the mark karam is there, so you get to have it, what can I find that? What's the point? Why would you want to do anything that we don't have fun in the environment and we enjoy it? And I'll tell you how is this close to my mind when I'm just doing one course. And I'm literally my mother is going to be out of it because she said, do you really need Hair and makeup, like you didn't brush your hair as a kid, you didn't want to brush your hair hair or like put on lipstick. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, when I can do it, I do it when I don't have certain days, I don't have the energy or need really to finish a whole day's work. I am one of 370 people in my company to be the one of them and then come back and sit in a hair makeup chair and get into 
costume and then came in my and the acidity because of the tight dress. I can't do it. I mean, I don't do it. Some things when I can, like today I really wanted to wear a sari and I pulled out my best sari. You know, from way back and I said, I'll dress up and I'll come for this. But days where I don't feel like it, I don't do it. I never push myself to the point where I know it's going to ruin my mental health. That's the most important thing for me. It's okay. I won't be the this thing for one week. It's fine. It's going to be nice. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open it up to, to for questions in a minute, but I just want to, I think we'll lighten up a little bit. What's your most embarrassing fashion faux pas that you've been doing to you? Uh, wearing uh, white lingerie and a black dress and a black hat with flash. Have you just thought about it when we've when, been talking to it? Um, no, I think that was. But this was pre like social media. I don't know how I would feel about it now. Maybe I wouldn't do it, obviously. I would have to cover it. But uh, yeah, I think I was quite a sport about it. Okay. Nothing else for you? So many to be sure. <laughs> uh, but I'm always uh, the most underdressed person in the room. Not to be. But otherwise. I'm going to be that honor to be. Today, that honor to be the most You should have worn a jacket. Uh, but yeah, I think I need to dress up a little more. I would be uh, much happier if I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Too many lunches. Too many. And it's all documented. I started working at 15. So people have seen me work from 15 and 34 today. There's enough evidence of how terribly I failed uh, on the internet. All you need to do is Google me. Um, yeah, but I'm really, uh, I'm really proud of it now. I just feel like I've come such a long way. And uh, and sometimes when I'm having a long day, I'm actually looking at those images. I'm like, it's not the I'm like, it's okay. You know, it's an interesting point. I want to ask what you think about Films and fashion, any form of art is the, you know, does it hold up when you look back? I, I, I know this because when you look at films and I look at Dilchata and I say, you know, it holds up. Um, 20 years later, it still holds up. I, I, you know, what, what, is, what is it important? <coughs> are you thinking about that when you're, when you're creating fashion, when you're, when you're creating a look? Is it going to hold up? Because, you know, I look at old films and I don't think of Dilchata. The fashion sometimes isn't holding up in that fashion, in that, in that film. There's this one song, Koi Kare, it's a, it's a disco song, and I'm like, I can't believe they were that stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, what, what is, uh, I, I don't know, I mean, like, a lot of stuff actually, we'll go back to the, you know, to the, the 80s, so the 80s, we'll just, we we'll don't we'll we'll just forget the 80s, and everyone was back in the 80s. You know, a lot of 90s stuff also, you can do it, but you know, the word that, that was okay. Uh, are you conscious of that, and then, or is that just way too much pressure to take on that? What do you think of the 20 years later? I think it's cyclic with the whole 80s and 90s pretty much came back a couple of years ago with the oversized yes. jackets, that the big hair thanks to Miley Cyrus's back and it's so like, I woke up like that too. Um, but I don't think where fashion independently is concerned it's meant to be sort of, it's, it's, it's meant to be cyclic, like it's meant to have new things and all of that and of course we do have the idea of elements and things that are classics yeah. and that stay forever, like uh, like the black dress or the you know, Audrey Hilfer and Edith Head. Uh, we can't talk about cinema and costume without talking about Edith Head. She is the, um, she, she, she's the woman to have won the most Oscars ever. I think she's eight or nine or ten and, and nobody sort of matches that. And of course she's a costume designer. Um, yeah, but like the black dress for example, and she dressed Audrey at the, the Roman holiday and Various breakfast at Tiffany's, all of that. Um, so some classic songs remain and never go out of style, and that's that's really beautiful too. But I think it's you know cyclic in fashion where you can have fun with things, where sometimes it's trendy and sometimes it's just a safe sort of fun. We made a song last year called Tavala, which people loved. On, uh, it was a rage, people loved it. Yeah, the curly hair, the curly hair. So there were two kind of uh, women who came up to me. Uh, one was someone middle-aged, and she was like, you know, I'm really thankful to you that I'm feeling that, you know, it's good to be curly, and it's good to you know, be a bit chubby. And I did not tell that moment realize that I, according to her, I was chubby. So I thought I was just fine. 
But uh, uh, well, well, uh, it was nice to see that even in the yeah. yeah. and if there's one thing that I would really like to encourage through the way I dress today is to embrace my curves and to make women feel great about it because people want it and if you have it, I think you should just flaunt it and enjoy it. And then I have a pretty young girl who had made a reel on the same song. And she was like, you know, I went and I got the same animal print fabric and I got the same color and I made that print and I got it made for my tailor and I did this reel and she was showing me the reel. So I was like, you know what, that's what's happening right now with what as actors we are doing. Someone that young is getting influenced in terms of ideas. You know, she told her hair, she did exactly what I did. And so that's the influence we have right now. So I think the idea is to enjoy yourself and um, and yeah, just see the magic happen because somewhere or other, you do something heartfelt, it touches people. I think when I'm creating magic, I definitely think about uh, well, I think things have changed actually for me. I have to say, when I started off, it was more about is the song trend or is this something that's going to be cool for now and be sweet. So, me and me and Masala went for breakfast one particular morning. <laughs> And uh, I cannot tell you, we couldn't eat breakfast because only people kept coming to the table to talk to Masala and tell her how much they love the collections. And uh, it was like, so you cap and just like a basic, you know, I love this. I was so happy to just see, and then some people were not from the country. I knew one gentleman who was not from India and he was wearing her shirt. And he just like came up and he was like, listen, people are wearing her shirt. And it was so, it was a happy to be right that today Indian designers, Indian work, is everywhere. It's really being spoken about. It's being celebrated. It's being looked up to. So I think it's a great time for Indian people to be so proud of what they do, be it in fashion or anything else. Before I go to the only other thing I feel we should talk about is men and fashion. I don't think that's. You tell us. I want a printed cage jacket. I wish I had the current. No, but it feels like many of you are doing as well. Video drama is a is a very rapid part of just making it easier. Yes. Um, do you feel like the game is going to be the main and the game as well? I think they've always sort of been the biggest spenders. I mean, naturally, since the bigger earners. But the women's apparel market, the Sabahul Ibri, has been like phenomenally huge. But in terms of design, it's in India, it's always been led by, by the women designers, by Bradley Ray. But now I I see men. So much fun. I mean, I'm a big fan of how Vijay Verma dresses. I'm not looking at the I'm a big fan of how Rinri dresses. And every actor today is sort of having fun on the red carpet with his Instagram. I mean, it's not just enough to have an amazing body and those fab abs. You know, you also have to occupy it. And I love that. And I see that translating into regular people. You know, a lot of grooms are not just showing up in like fab India kurtas or you know, whatever's available. Um, yeah, but you know, effort is amazing, right? It's nice to sort of take effort to sort of dress up whether you're going to work or you're getting married or you're, you're a famous person. It's just nice to have, you know, work with, you know, and I, and, and I love the fact that men are having so much fun with it. You know the one I have to ask, right? Who takes longer to dress up? you know what do you Of course, I know. I think it of time. I'm out in 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, we'll open it up to if anyone has questions, you'll raise your hand and we'll send a mic to the gentleman there. I think we can take maybe three questions. Can we send a mic to the gentleman there or I can stand up and uh, just go for it. Okay. Uh, so I'm uh, from Sri Lanka, from Colombo. Um, so I'm currently editing the Colombo Fashion Council and uh, the session was really good and it was very enlightening about fashion and film and we are a big fan of both of you and Masala Masala I think was number one TV show uh, in Sri Lanka for Netflix so we are big fans of them in there so my question is about fashion conscious and sustainability now as an uh, actor Amanda do you think twice before you pick a garment from a designer to understand what you do, a little bit of a background check to know how this garment is produced, or uh, the animals are slaughtered, 
on the coming from sex shop. How much conscience are you about that? And also, Musaba, how conscious are you about your production? Uh, with a constant sustainability and ethical fashion. Thank you. So, um, for me, I think now I've made a point that I have the most easiest level to manage. Uh, I've kept my personal clothing to bear with me because I realize I like my only four pants. And I keep holding that like everybody else. And uh, um, but when I work, yes, I keep needing different kind of clothes. And as and when I prefer what I need. But in today's times, I've actually been interacting with a few designers closely. Uh, from Masaba to Rahul Mishra to Ross Gupta, uh, And I feel like they are people who, are, who have been so instrumental in putting out India on, you know, on the world map. Um, and I make sure, when I was talking about Rahul, this collection itself was inspired by uh, nature. So, uh, and it was also thinking of spreading sex, for example, which I thought was a beautiful thought and idea. And just to know this idea of sustainability. So I'm actually educating myself uh, while I'm also uh, making choices where I take in only what I need and not excessively splurge on things that I don't think I can reuse. Because I feel like uh, it can never be enough. So it's best to minimize what you can actually use and uh, I'm being conscious of that. Yeah. I think uh, for me, you know, running the fashion label, um, to be very honest, it's very difficult to be 100% sustainable. If you see some of the largest brands in the world, including H&M, uh, have pledged to be sustainable many, many years down the line. I'm talking about maybe a decade later. Um, it's because one, it requires money, and two, it is something that is, you know, the thing is, not being sustainable has actually penetrated so deep into fashion, into society, that we have to undo a lot of that. And that takes a lot longer than actually saying, I like to be a sustainable label. Uh, at a very basic level, as a brand, we make small changes every day to how we look at sustainability, and fashion is one of the biggest polluters of the world, we all know that. There's no Denying that. Um, having said that, when we have all the waste fabric that's left over after a garment is made, we call it katran, it's just pieces of fabric that you can't really do anything with. We started to make little scrunchies and hair bands, so we make little scarves, we started to make masks during COVID uh, out of that fabric. We started to also make sure there was a system of that waste to be picked up and recycled and made into something else. That was one. Um, a couple of years back, I had the opportunity to tie up with the United Nations Environment Program, where we actually uh, worked with them closely to understand single-use plastic, which is actually the single biggest polluter uh, worldwide. And it's nothing, it's the plastic bag you use to go to the vegetable market to buy it, sabzi and fruit or whatever, and it's, you know, the little things that you use every day, you just quickly discard it. So today, for example, even as a human being, I'm going to a nature's basket to you know, stop up the house, I'm not taking a plastic bag. I'm consciously saying I will take the same muslin tote that I've been using over and over again. Having said that, coming back to the new net uh, collection that we did, we made a collection of garments that, so for example, the sleeve could be zipped off and it would fold up and it would become a carry bag. You know, so we had about, I think, a 20-25 piece collection that we did with them in collaboration to educate people about how single-use plastic is the biggest polluter. There are many different types of fabrics which are actually not as big polluters of the world as that. Um, another thing I tell you is in the beauty industry, there's a lot of noise about the cartons that do uh, that are shipped when you're buying a single lipstick. For example, you buy a lipstick that big and the carton is that big. Or you buy a nail paint that, that, that's that much and you know a carton that's that much. You know, people can say things over and over again about how it shouldn't be that big a box, it should be smaller, etc, etc. 
the fact of the matter is, if you don't have that big a box, and you don't fill it up with bubble wrap and all these things to plant it, your product will come in damage. And we haven't reached there in my duty products are um, you know, recyclable, the packaging. So I think in small ways we make amends, but to be 100% sustainable is a long journey and it's one that we all have walked on. But I, I see that it's not something that can happen in the near future. And I don't want to just say it because it's a full marketing gimmick, but uh, it's a long journey and it, we, we've taken it on. And as and when we have the capital, as and when we have the means, and we have uh, the acceptance from consumers, we will take it. You know? Oh, sorry, can I say something? I think that India is always sustainable. If you look at our childhood, when we had a um, moment growing up, I used to wear my aunt's and uncle's uh, clothes. I used to love those big t-shirts. I used to take like, my, uh, you know, my family's clothes. I've grown up with that. And I think I do that today. Today, I give my clothes, some of my designer wear, to you know, your family. And this is how a calm army is sustainable to go support. It is like Masaba said on a business level, it's a different world being all together. There are so many aspects that are not something one can immediately do. But a calm army is sustainable to be very easy. If you want to. So I think what we have done in the past, if you want to do it today, then it's very simple actually. It's not easy. Just finally, I'm going to ask you, I don't think sustainability only means waste management. It, it, I mean, Indian fashion by its very nature is so dependent on craft, which is so dependent on artisans, whether they are workers or, or weavers or dyers or printers. So Indian fashion, you know, authentic Indian fashion is very, very sustainable in that it, so many people slightly more dependent on it. You know, more rural, rural, rural industry sort of thrives on, uh, on Indian fashion, but I think it's one of the most sustainable places to be. Uh, as for uh, natural fabrics, I think it's the way to go and, and cruelty free in India actually means something else because I'm a big advocate of leather. It is the most sustainable uh, uh, fabric that there is. It's one of the most sustainable materials. It lasts for decades and anything you have that's natural you know, leather or full leather or anything will pretty much fall apart in six months. And maybe cost you as much and you will just be recycling or throwing that away. Uh, but if you see good quality leather shoes, they could be you know, for a couple of generations. Right, yes. Um, my question is for you, Masaba. What's your take on FEI in their fashion week? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. um, well, it's such a great initiative. I think it's your fourth year. Yeah. Am I right? Okay. Uh, it's your fourth year and I think just for the limited amount of time that uh, you guys have been doing this and I think the panel discussion is, is always nice to add as a layer to new worlds which are happening tomorrow. Uh, but I think it's always nice to have meaningful conversation with, uh, you know, esteemed panelists and Rajiv himself as well and talk about things that matter, talk about the future more importantly. And I think for not just for me, but I think for everybody here, it's been a big learning today to come here and uh, you know, just think about all the choices that we're making as creators or as consumers uh, or just as, you know, as, as an audience. So I think it's lovely and thank you for having me. Can we please have a round of applause for our panelists and our moderator? I would also now like to call on the stage with Mr. Sanjay Nigam, founder of Fashion Entrepreneur of Fun. Please come on the stage and present a small token of appreciation to our panelists and moderator. Round of applause, ladies <laughs> A round of applause for Mr. Raji Masar. Ma'am, 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 please close. Yeah. So look here. Yeah. One minute.
Sorry, yeah. So look here, look here, look here. Ma'am. Okay. Sir, 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 Thank you so much for being here. Namandi solo. Man. Come here. 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 Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, madam. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, look, look. Radio. Camera, camera, camera. But what is by camera? Full frame. 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 Full Thank you. 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 I have a stream for the first time. What is special for you? You have a celebrity, you have to follow your It's a way of expressing yourself. Yes. Our creativity is a way of expressing yourself. I am coming to the project. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.